Okay, so I thought that I wanted to start today's class. Uh, before we start discussing the questions, uh, okay, I wanted to start by looking at this again. Uh. Remember uh, that in now, okay, in your current syllabus, uh, and this is something, uh, and this is something that actually is changing uh, in a lot of countries, uh, their own syllabus as well. Uh. Okay, they are changing, but some of the videos are, you know, are old videos, and so they show the old way. Yeah. Okay, the most important thing about the galvanometer, uh, galvanometer reading is that it always points towards where the current is coming from. Okay, last time it used to point towards where the current is going out. Okay, uh, that was in the old syllabus, lah, and those were like older, older galvanometers. Okay, but now the more current galvanometers are as of ten years ago, lah. Okay, uh, galvanometers will always show to the uh, will always point to the direction where the current is coming from. So if the current is coming from this side, okay, it's going to come. It's going to point to the left. If the current is coming from this side. It's going to uh, point to the right. But the magnitude nah, is still the same. So that you can, it doesn't just show you the direction, but it also shows you a reading. Okay, so example for this is this is about two point something uh, amperes. This is also about two point something amperes, but in the other direction. Lah. Okay, so uh, so this is a very important thing. Huh? So I wanted to start by discussing about this and to show you another two videos. <laughs> Okay, actually it's just one video, but I had to separate it into two slides. Lah. Okay, about how this is proven. Huh? So, yeah. Okay, today we are going to uh, experimentally derive Lenz's law. So first things first, we have galvanometers here. For those teachers that are watching this, the galvanometers are in series. Why is that important? Because that way you can have the entire classroom seeing what you're doing uh, without having to move the galvanometer back and forth. Uh, a galvanometer uh, is actually just an ammeter that records microamps, so it's a very sensitive galvan, a very sensitive ammeter. You can notice here we have red going into black, and then red going through the circuit back to black. Um, what I want you to see, because some students were a little confused about this, if current goes into the black, into the red, it will come out the black. Following the circuit, it will then go into the red here and out the black here. So again, because the way the charges work, if they're going in, they must go out on the other side, otherwise the circuit wouldn't be working. So let's find out how the, uh, the, amp, the galvanometers actually work. I have here a 1.5 volt battery, just a basic Duracell. Why did I pick a Duracell versus anything else? Because it has that copper top and it's very easy to see. That's the positive. I guess I could use a marker there to show that. So this shows the direction of positive current flow. That right there is a 6.6 .6 uh, kilo ohm resistor. It's 6,600 ohms. Why? Because I have to get the current low enough so that it will read on the galvanometer and not hurt the galvanometer. So looking at the galvanometer, I'm going to connect the circuit and if the positive current is flowing into the red, it reads positive. Okay, again, looking over here at the circuit, the positive current flow is going into the red side of the galvanometer and that's why it reads again positive. Now let's switch the battery around so that the positive current flow is flowing into the negative. So what's in the galvanometer? It reads negative. So we now have an indicator. All this circuit is showing us is proving to us what the galvanometer tells us. If positive current flow flows into the red, it reads positive. If positive current flow flows into the black, it reads negative. So if you're on the board, I'm going to write this down. If it reads positive, then positive current into the positive terminal. If it reads negative, then the positive current goes into the negative side. That's all it's telling us is which side the current is flowing in or out. So. Okay, there's another video. Hold on. Okay, today we are going to... Okay, now we took out the uh, circuit and we put in a solenoid. A solenoid is just a set of wires that have been wrapped as magnetic wire made out of copper. Now, in this case, I've put these down here so that the students can see that it's one big circuit. I've also adjusted the, the, uh, I've also adjusted the solenoid. If you look here, there's a wire going this way showing the direction the coils are wrapped. 
but that's hard to see from the student's perspective. So I've added this uh, uh, this uh, paper clip here so that they can see the, the wires flowing this direction and the wires flowing this direction. That's just pure for demonstration pur 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 purposes so that the students can see better. I'm going to hook this up so that I have the positive side here and the positive and the negative side here. Now this tells me if the current is flowing out this direction, it goes into the red, this should read positive. If current is flowing out the black lead, both galvanometers will read negative. This is important because we're going to find out that there will be an induced current and therefore an induced magnet inside the solenoid. We can't read that with a compass or something, but we can definitely figure out which way the current is flowing, which will prove to us the direction of the induced magnet. I now have a stack of magnets. Let's prove which side is north, which side is south. I have a compass that is pointing uh, roughly north. When I go like this, you notice it's the south side of the compass is pointing that direction. So this must be a north pole. Now, if we look up on the board, we have four situations that we're going to go over. We're going to put a north pole in, read the ammeter. We're going to put pull the north pole out, read the ammeter, south pole in, read the ammeter, south pole out, etc. And then we're going to derive experimentally what Lenz's law tells us. So let's start off with the north pole in. Okay, I'm about to put the north pole in, watching the, watching the galvanometer. Now, you saw it go to the north, you saw it go to the positive side. Let's mark this on the board. The galvanometer read positive, which means current is flowing into the positive side, which means the circuit being complete, it must go that direction. If we follow it from behind, it means all of the current on the front side of the solenoid is going this direction. Using the circular right hand rule, which is for current flow in solenoids or wires, fingers from behind the solenoid, around the top, that means the induced magnet in the solenoid is to the right, or the north pole is on the right side. The north, and this is the south. Again, this is not something that we decided, this is something that we found experimentally. Now let's take the north out, back to the solenoid. I have to also notice that while the stack of magnets is in the solenoid, there is no induced current. That's very important. This only happens when there's a change of magnetism, not when there's magnetism inside the solenoid. So here I go. I'm going to pull this out. Ready? And it read negative. Let's go back to our diagram. If the meter reads negative, that means current is flowing into the negative side, following the circuit, out of the positive side, which means the current on the front of the solenoid is all flowing upwards. Now, one of the things that's helped the students this year is if you think about this as a hose and you put water into the hose, all the water will flow that direction. Using our right-hand rule, that side must be the induced magnet's north pole. Now, we'll take the south. I turn around the stack of magnets. Watching. Ready? Now, it read negative. Back up to the board. Again, if the solenoid reads negative, it means that the current flow into the negative side, following the circuit, this direction, which means all of the current on the front of the solenoid flowed up this direction. Using our right hand rule, up over the solenoid, our thumb points towards north. Now we take the south out of the solenoid. Watching, it read positive, which means current flowed into the north, uh, into the positive side of the of the ammeter, and out of the black, out of the negative side. Again, from behind, all of the current in each of these is now flowing down the front. Fingers from behind, down in the front. That's the north pole. Now, if we take a look at something very curious, let's start again on our first situation over on the left-hand side. You see that we have two north poles here, and two north poles will repel. <coughs> here, 
we see a north and a south will attract. Two south poles will repel. A north and a south will attract. In each of these cases, we try to put a north pole in, it opposes it with a north, making a north pole towards the north pole that's trying to enter. I try to pull out the, the north pole. It makes a south pole trying to keep it back in. I put a south pole in. It tries to make a south pole to repel it. I pull a south out. It tries to make a north pole to pull it back in. In each of these four cases, the induced magnetic field in the solenoid is, a, is opposing the change of magnetism. Now, when the magnet was just in the solenoid, there's no change, so there's no opposition, and there is no induced magnet, only when there's a change. This leads us to Lenz's law, which we have written in our physics kind of way. The induced current, I is current, just as we use in electricity. The induced current produces an induced magnetic field that opposes the change of magnetic field. Uh, just to show you two things, uh, two very important things. Number one, I wanted to show to you again uh, the fact that now the galvanometer, uh, it, they, it moves according to uh, how the, uh, where the current flows in. Okay, and I think the demonstration just now was uh, pretty clear. Number two, I think this is a very good way also to prove Lenz's law. Of course, you need the whole setup, like you need a solenoid, and then you need uh, a strong enough magnet and uh, sensitive enough galvanometer in order to be able to detect the reading. Okay, and uh, this video also reminds me uh, that uh, whenever you use the right hand rule, I think it's also good to use the pen. Okay, just to see whether the current is going behind and coming over or whether it's going up and going behind. Okay, so having the pen uh, will help you to know which side, macam mana mau pegang lah. Okay, always remember that the wires in front of the pen, okay, must face you. Okay, they must be depan dengan kamu. So, if, you're, if it's coming down this way, okay, then your hand will be like that lah. Uh, if, it is going, if it is going up this way, okay, then your hand will be like this. Okay, so like this, and then the other way will be like this. Okay, like this and like this. <laughs> Just to show you which side is north uh, of the solenoid. Okay, all right. So let's begin our tutorial session. Our... Oh no, Where is... <laughs> hold on. Okay. okay, yes, let's begin our tutorial session. Huh? So uh, in this tutorial session, we're going to cover as many questions as we can. All right, uh, and let's try not to waste time, uh, okay? Let's try not to waste time. Um, let's have, let's go alphabetically, lah. Okay, we go alphabetically so that we don't waste time. Uh, number one, please, Adam. C. C. The induced current passes from the through the government in the direction of Q to P. Uh. Oh, really? C. Uh. C. Uh. Okay, let's double check. Uh. If this is north, north is going in. This side is going to become north because it wants to oppose. So if this side is north, this side is south. So, okay, so if this is north and this is south, your finger should point here, right? So it should be going down here. So everything is going downwards, 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 downwards. Oh. So it should actually be, it should actually be from P to Q. How do you get C? Uh? Uh. <laughs> okay, number two, Eliska? D. D, all right. The magnet and the solenoid are moved at the same velocity. Okay, you cannot get uh, the this one. All right, number three, uh, Angeli. A. Three A. Uh. Mm. Shows the direction, correct direction of the current induced. This one uh, means it's going downhill. If it's going down here, if it's going down here, it means this side is north and this side is south. Cannot be uh. If this is going in, this should actually be north. Okay, so the actual answer will be B. Uh. Okay, because if this side is going out, this is south, south right. Okay. Then this will be north. And if this is north, then everything will be going up this way. OK, 
okay this is down so everything is going up okay use the pen to help you lah. i think the pen may be uh, very useful lah. okay number four brandon c number four c will not increase the deflection decreasing the diameter of the solenoid really yeah decreasing the diameter of the sun if the diameter of the sun becomes smaller um if the diameter of the sun becomes smaller that means that there there is a bigger possibility yeah uh, i think there's yeah there is there is a bigger possibility for more magnetic fields to be cut okay so i'm afraid that answer is not correct uh, okay it is actually a if you reverse the polarity, it doesn't change the, it will not increase the deflection. It will change the direction of deflection, correct? Dia akan ubah arah, tetapi dia tidak akan menjadikan nilainya lebih besar, which is what the question is asking. Increasing the deflection means making the reading bigger. Okay, but good thing that your B and your D, you definitely, this is definitely correct lah. Okay, make sure that the B and D you didn't answer. I think C is a good trick question lah. Okay, but it's not C because when you decrease the diameter, when it becomes smaller, okay, then it's easier to cut. There is a bigger chance uh, of cutting more uh, magnetic field lines. Okay, daripada kalau dia luas kan, kalau dia luas tetapi size magnetnya masih kecil kan, ada kemungkinan yang banyak medan magnet tidak akan terpotong. Okay, alright, number five, uh, Damir. B. Okay, very good. The number of turns of coils is increased, okay, to increase the deflection of the galvanometer. Same question as just now lah, okay. Ini semua tiada kaitan lah, especially push slowly lah. Push slowly memang akan menyebabkan kurang. Okay, number six, uh, Daniel. Oh. A. A. Huh. Interesting. Fluctuation of the current flow through Okay, first of all, you need to identify this generator. Huh? Is this an AC or DC generator? DC. Yeah, it's a DC generator. Okay, so if it is a DC generator, then A and B and C are definitely out. Because if it is a DC generator, and you know there is a DC generator because there's only one pair of uh, split rings. Okay, so the answer will be D, the only answer that is acceptable. This is AC, this is AC, this is AC. Okay, uh, and this is definitely DC because everything is in the positive direction. Positive, negative, positive, negative is AC generator. And the big feature about the AC generator is that it doesn't have a split ring but it has two slip rings. Okay, very, very uh, important difference. Lah. Okay, number seven, Elijah. D. D, okay, very good. No induced current is only when it is in a vertical position. Okay, when it's horizontal, maximum. When it is halfway, there is, but not so much. But the moment where it is vertical, it is uh, zero induced current. All right, good. Number eight, uh, sorry. Who's after Elijah? Uh, Irdina. D. Okay, very good. Maximum current happens when the direction is downwards. Okay, but the important thing is that the velocity is high. It cannot be horizontal because horizontal means it is parallel to the magnetic field. So we don't want that. It must cut. Okay, so that's the best way to produce a maximum current. Okay, number nine, Jerry, uh, Jacinta. B. Okay, very good. Same question as number eight. Uh, move the conductor along PQ. Kamu mesti memotong. Okay, it must cut. Okay, the magnetic field lines. All right, in order to get the maximum, uh, in order to get induce EMF. Okay, number ten, Jericho. B. All right, the magnet is released from a higher position. Uh. Okay, higher position means higher kinetic energy, which means higher velocity oh sorry uh, higher position means <laughs> higher uh, potential energy which means when you let go it will have a higher kinetic energy which means that it will have a higher velocity okay this one again 
doesn't affect uh, polarity increase. There's no such thing as polarity increase. How do you increase the polarity? Polarity is either north or south. Kau tidak boleh menambah dia punya kekutuban. Macam mana kamu mau jadikan utara lebih utara? Cannot. It's not possible. Okay, so uh, A is definitely wrong. Okay, B and C we've discussed before. Huh? Okay, number 11, uh, Chris Fia, I think. Yeah. Uh, so this is... Yeah, it is an AC generator. Huh? So if it is an AC generator, it will be C. Okay, hold on. Okay, it will definitely be C because it is an AC generator. All right, next. <sighs> Number 12, uh, Lester. B. D, uh, right hand great rule. Uh. Right hand Fleming. Oh, B, okay. Fleming's right hand rule. Uh, okay, because it is a single, uh, it is a single conductor. All right, thanks. Uh, after Lester is Lewis. Number 13. C. Okay, question C. Uh, magnitude of the magnetic strength is it? But we want to increase the magnitude of the current or why would you reduce the magnitude of the magnetic strength? Oh, it can't be C, right? What should the answer be? D, D, D. Okay, it will be D. Yeah? The resistance of the coil, uh, coil, blah. The resistance of the coil is reduced. When resistance is reduced, current is increasing. Okay, because there's less resistance, current increase, current increase, the, okay, the magnitude of the current will increase. Lah. Okay, all right. Let's move on to the paper two questions. Uh, let's see if we can answer as much as we can. Lah. Uh, who's after Louis? Uh, Melanie, name the physical quantity that is measured by the galvanometer. Current. Okay, it's uh, current. Lah. All right, very good. Okay, let's have one person to do all this. Lah. Compare all three. After Melanie is uh, Michelle. Michelle. Compare the strength, compare the number of turns and the size of the deflection of the galvanometer pointer. Uh, the strength of magnetic field of the bar magnet in diagram 10.1 is smaller than the strength of magnetic field of the bar magnet in diagram 10.2. Number of turns of the coil... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Uh, First of all, I appreciate that you wrote the, the very, very correct and full length of the answer. Uh, but for discussion purposes, we just uh, <laughs> just give me the short version. Uh. Okay, thank you so much for writing the long version, which is the correct version. But since we're only discussing, uh, just shorten it. Oh, uh. okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, the, 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 the number of turns the oh. coil in diagram 10.1 is smaller and then the size of deflection of the galvanometer pointer in diagram 10.1 is smaller okay sorry can you say about the strength of the bar magnet again uh the strength of magnetic field of the bar magnet in diagram 10.1 is small 10.1 is smaller than 10.2 how do you get that i have no problem with this and this, but I have a slight issue with this. How do you know that the strength of 10.1, the magnetic field of the bar magnet, is smaller uh -huh. than 10.2? Because um, I think the cross section area of the coil is smaller. Okay, but that will only affect the size of the deflection of the galvanometer. The strength of the magnetic field is because of the bar magnet. So you're saying, so you're essentially saying uh, that in this one, 10.2, the magnetic field uh, of 10.2 is stronger than 10.1. Is that true? Is that necessarily true? <laughs> okay. Um, okay lah, obviously, when I ask questions like this, uh, means it's not lah. <laughs> so, 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 so let me point out. But the good thing is you got the other two correct lah. Actually, the strength of the magnetic field is the same because it is the same bar magnet that is being dropped into two different coils. Uh, do you see that? Oh, okay, okay. okay. Same bar magnet. So that's why, and the bar magnet, and the question uh, is very smart. You know, it asks uh, the strength of the magnetic field of the bar magnet. If it says, 
if it says uh, the strength of the induced magnetic field. Okay, induced magnetic field means when you put the magnet inside, uh, then can this coil will become will have current flow and therefore it will also have its own magnetic field, right? Uh, then you can say that 10.1 will be a smaller induced magnetic field than 10.2. But the question is actually asking the strength of magnetic field of the bar magnet. That means the bar magnet punya magnetic magnetic field. Okay, and since it is the same bar magnet, it will be the same strength of magnetic field. Okay, good try. Huh? Uh, this is correct. 10.2 is more than 10.1, and the size of the deflection at 10.2 is more than 10.1. Okay, very good. Mordecai, the relationship, please. There are three relationships here. Ostaga. Okay. Number of turns of the coil with the size of the deflection. Number of turns of the coil with the rate of change of magnetic flux. The rate of change of magnetic flux is current for so many. Okay, go ahead. Bigger and bigger. The, the bigger the number of turns, the bigger the size of the deflection. Okay, bigger and bigger. Number of turns and rate of change. The bigger the number of turns, the bigger the rate of change. Okay, rate of change and magnitude. The bigger the rate of change, the bigger the magnitude. Okay, so everything is just bigger and bigger. Okay, uh, higher number of turns, higher size, larger number of turns, larger array. Uh, rate of change is directly proportional. Okay, you can also see the bigger the this one, the bigger the this one. Okay, lah, okay, lah. okay, bigger, larger, higher, uh, greater, all these are acceptable words. Uh, okay, explain the working principle of a DC generator. Okay, let's skip this example, uh, this one, because the working principle of a DC generator is a very long one now, but this is basically it. Uh, these are basically the three points, now, as I said. You rotate the coil, coil will cut the magnetic field lines, okay, or cut the magnetic flux, you produce an induced current. How do you determine the direction of the induced current? It will be use Fleming's, uh, right? Is it right? Uh, right hand rule, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Fleming's right hand rule, right? <laughs> okay, Fleming's right hand rule to, to to determine the direction. If it is a four mark question, but since this is three marks, these are the main three points. How is the coil rotated? By using your own hand, okay? You rotate the coil yourself. Somebody asked me uh, over the past few days, lah. So how the, the coil rotate itself, or is there somebody to rotate? The coil? <laughs> no, you rotate the coil. Okay, you rotate the coil, and then the coil will cut the magnetic field lines, and then it will produce an induced current. Okay, the most basic explanation. But if it is a four mark question, now guys, okay, if it is a four mark question, you need to talk about Fleming's right hand rule because that will determine the direction of the current flow. Okay, generator. Huh? All right, let's go to this. What is the meaning of induced current? Uh, who's after Mordecai? And uh, Iqbal, what is the meaning of induced current? Uh, induced current is the current produced when there is a cutting, cutting of magnetic field line. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think that's a good answer. Okay, induced current is current that is produced when there is cutting of magnetic field lines. Um, hold on now, uh, I need to see where is the definition. <laughs> the definition is much, much later. Okay, let's hold on to that first. Uh. Uh, next person, uh, compare the height of the magnet released and the size of the galvano size of the deflection of the galvanometer. Uh, okay, Tian. Um, the higher, the higher the magnet. Uh, oh, the 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 compare, compare uh, the height. Oh, 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 um, wait, uh, um, wait, uh, sir. Oh. Um, diagram 10.1 is higher than 10.2, and the size is, um, 10.1 bigger than 10.2. Are we looking at the same diagram? Oh, hold on, eh? oh, oh, okay, okay. Ah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, the height is 10.1 is 
bigger than 10.2 and the size is 10.2 bigger than 10.1. No, again, I'm asking you the same question. Are we looking at the same diagram? Uh, wait, uh, uh the, the this height... is 10.1, you know. On top here is 10.1 and at the bottom here is 10.2. So how can the 10.1, the height be higher than 10.2 if... Do you understand what I'm saying? Unless the um, diagram in the module is different, lah, hold on, lah. No, it's the same. Oh. <laughs> the the height of magnet release ten point one is higher than ten point two. Okay. I, I think I know what you mean, lah. It's just that maybe you're not reading the diagram properly, yeah. It's actually 10.1A mm. is smaller than 10.1B. Oh! Uh, <laughs> because on top here, everything is 10.1. At the bottom here, everything is 10.2. So when you're comparing, the magnet release is this one and this one, right? So magnet release now is 10.1A is less than 10.1B. Because diagram A, diagram B, ma. Do you understand what I'm saying, Tien? Um, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> then the size of the deflection of the galvanometer, you look at this galvanometer, lah, and then you find that ten point one A, the size is smaller than ten point. Ah, uh, sorry, ten point two A is lesser than 10.2 B. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Ah, okay. okay. I, I, I think it's, uh, this, is a, this is a very common uh, mistake also, like, because they see, you only see 10.1, 10.2, right? But you forget that actually 10.1 is talking about the difference in the height, and 10.2 is talking about the difference in the, the deflection of the galvanometer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. I think you okay, have the you, idea. Lah. All right. You have the idea. Lah. The idea is there, but maybe you just forgot that it's, there's an A and B involved. Lah. Shim, can you answer this, please? The relationship. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Holy high. <hard. laughs> the greater the height of the magnet release, the greater the velocity of the magnet when it enters the coil. Okay. The bigger the height of the magnet release, the bigger the size of the deflection of the galvanometer. Okay. The greater the velocity of the magnet, the greater the magnetic of induced current when it's under the coil. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the higher, the higher. Okay, so this is the one uh, that I met. 10.1B uh, 10 and 10.1A. This is 10.2B and 10.2A. And to answer Iqbal's question, uh, the induced current is the current produced when there is a cutting or the change of magnetic field lines. Okay, very nicely done. Okay, so apart from the small uh, drama that we had just now, <laughs> Okay, uh, everybody is uh, okay, lah. Everybody is on track, lah. Okay, so just be careful with this, lah. Yeah, Shima, even if you don't know how to answer, you must tell what you know. <laughs> Otherwise, somebody else will have to take the fall for you. My goodness. <laughs> okay, explain how the dynamo works to produce the current to light the lamp of a bicycle. So it's four marks, okay? Uh, because this is a generator, so you know that the same three points are there, okay? There is a motion. Okay, then there is a cutting of magnetic field lines and then there is the produce uh, produce uh, induced current okay this is the basic trees the basic three points just like the generator just now lah. okay except that there is a fourth mark lah, because you have to talk about the dynamo itself and this is where the fourth mark is okay the tire rotates the knob this is the knob lah. so when the tire moves Okay, this knob will be pushing. Okay, when the knob will pushing, the magnet will rotate in the coil, and then after that, it will cut the magnetic flux, and then it will produce induced current. Okay, so the same three points is always the same. So the fourth mark uh, is macam mana itu rotation berlaku. Okay, so if you if you look back at the generator just now, the question that we did just now for the generator, uh, this one, okay. Rotate, cut the magnetic flux, uh, cut the magnetic field lines, and then produce induced current. Okay, but it's three marks now. So in the case of a dynamo, you have to talk about how the rotation happens. Sebab kamu bukan rotate pakai tangan sendiri ba. 
okay you have to rotate it when the tire rotates the knob okay tire rotates the knob the knob will rotate the magnet in the coil okay so in this case uh, the pretty interesting thing is that the magnet is the one yang berpusing the coil is the one that stays still in the case of a generator it is the coil that is moving the magnet is kekal bahkan okay but in the case of a dynamo the magnet is rotating either way lah okay if the coil is still and the magnet rotate or if the magnet is still and the coil rotates lah, either way you will be cutting the magnetic flux and when you cut the magnetic flux you will produce induced current okay so whenever you have an explanation question like this lah, take note of how many marks there are lah. Okay, how many marks usually tells you a uh, minimum how many sentences. You need to make sure that you form, sorry, not sentences, like points, like how many points. You need to make sure that you have the minimum amount of points in order to get the full marks. Okay? All right, let's move on to question number three. Another compare and contrast question. Can we have Valerisa for this? After so long, can Valerisa menunggu-nunggu? Okay, compare. Eh? Valerisa, kau jawab compare lah. Uh, the direction of the motion for diagram 10.1 and diagram 10.2 is the same. Okay. And then the number of turns of wire and coil in diagram 10.2 is higher than in 10, diagram 10.1. Okay. And then the magnitude of deflection of the galvanometer pointer is higher in diagram 10.2 than in diagram 10.1. Okay, very good. All right, I think it is uh, entirely correct. Same direction, number of turns 10.2, more than 10.1. And galvanometer pointer 10.2 is more than 10.1. Okay, very nicely done. Well said. Relation, please. Three relationships. Oh, you have to give two relationships and one name the physics concept. Go for it. The greater the turn, the greater the magnitude of deflection. The greater the... The greater the turn, the greater the induced current. Uh, the physics concept is Faraday's law. Faraday's law. Okay, hold on now. The first relationship they ask you to do is relate the magnitude of direction with the number of turns. Oh, uh, sorry, magnitude of deflection. <laughs> relate the magnitude of deflection with the number of turns. I don't hear the word. The greater word. the magnitude of deflection, the monometer pointer, the greater the number of turns. Okay, let me ask you, uh, are you sure that is the correct order? Which one affects which one? Uh, the, the number of turns affect ah. the galvanometer pointer. So because the number of turns affect, right, the number of turns must come first. This is a very common uh, thing uh, that they do in exam question. Uh. They will purposely switch it around so that they make you think uh, which, is, which is the one that affects which one. Okay, is the deflection uh, affected by the number of turns or the number of turns affected by the deflection? Obviously, is the deflection is affected by the number of turns. So the order you write it now uh, is must be correct. The bigger the number of turns, therefore the bigger the magnitude of deflection. Okay, take note of that. Uh. Of course, the relationship is correct. The bigger, the bigger. Okay, no problem. Okay, it's just the order in which you write it must be is also equally as important. Okay, I think this one you wrote correct. Uh, the bigger the number of turns, the bigger the current induced. Okay, and the physics concept that you are saying is Faraday's law. Okay, which I think is correct. Okay, definitely it's correct. Lah, because this is uh, Faraday's law is talking about uh, number of turns and also the speed of the uh, speed of uh, the cutting of the magnetic field lines. Okay, so that's Faraday's law. Um, a lot of people are okay a lot of people and i don't know whether you're involved in this a lot of people may write this uh, as uh, electromagnetic induction okay the physics concept involved is electromagnetic induction uh, which is correct but it is not related to this okay it is not related to this electromagnetic induction as shafiq pointed out just now is the production of current when the magnetic field lines are cut if that is happening, then you talk about EM induction. But because the relationship uh, has nothing to do with the magnetic field lines, has nothing, has very little to do like, with the cutting of the magnetic field lines. Uh, so you want to make sure that you are getting the correct concept. 
Okay, and so good for you, lah. Wilson, you got the concept correct. Okay, it's Faraday's law. All right. Oh no, I have given the answer for this. <laughs> okay, so suggest modifications again, lah. Everyone, everything should be in a table form. The words in red must be on the left side, and the words in blue must be on the right side. Okay. Now, although this is ten marks, notice that usually, ah, uh, usually marking scheme they will give you they will give you a lot more, lah. Okay, um, as far as I know, okay, as far as I know, usually uh, there's about 20 answers, okay, are uh, in the marking scheme. So, you know, of course, if you want to give all 20 answers, so you can, lah, okay, but make sure that if you give five answers, you give five of the best, or you give five that you're very confident uh, is definitely correct. So, you want to state the modifications that can be made to change it into a high alternating current generator. So, you not only want to change the split ring to become a slip ring, okay, but you also want to make sure that it is a high alternating current. Okay, so that's why we use more magnet, stronger magnetic field. We use a radial magnet, nah, okay, so that you get you the magnetic field can be more concentrated. Okay, this point uh, probably, okay, I suspect uh, this point probably uh, is the one that most of you may miss out. Uh, okay, unless you refer to the black book, black book probably other. Okay, we use a thick wire because it has low resistance. This is probably the most common. Okay, more turns of the wire in order to cut more magnetic flux. We use a copper wire because it is low resistance, but this one uh, is wajib. Okay, this one is wajib. Okay, the purpose of the slip ring is to make sure that the direction of the current changes. Okay, with every half of rotation, that is the official this one. So this one must be wajib ada. So of all the of all the 12 points, right? This is the only one uh, that answers the alternating current. This one. Okay, yang lain semua, okay, menjawab persoalan high. We want a high, uh, we want a high, apa itu? Uh, we want a high current. Okay, so all this contributes to the high current thing. Okay, take a snapshot of this uh, if you want to copy, but make sure to remember to write this down as a table. Okay, the most important thing about the 10 mark questions uh, is the table. So, uh, <laughs>